All right, guys, it finally happened. I made a mistake. Either my tool offset is wrong, or my probing is wrong, or my programming is wrong because I just kissed this vise. Well, like I often do, I decided to run one of the parts first, you know, just to get all the wrinkles out, make sure it works well, so you get a good video. And uh, there were wrinkles. So it turns out that I made a mistake. When I was programming in, in Fusion 360, when I, I selected the top contour, and then there's a section where you say, you know, depth, how far do I want to go? I fat fingered it and I went too far, about looks like two millimeters too far. Now there isn't a lot of clearance. I only gave myself about a half a millimeter or a millimeter of clearance. But I, you know, I made contact, but that's okay. You know what? It happens. I'm okay. The style's okay. I've broken many end mills in my life and I have milled into many vices. It happens. It's no big deal. Let's take a minute and talk about how you can run an untested program and make sure that you're not going to collide with your vice. Like I said before, there, there are only a few things that could be wrong. We want to probe it and then we'll check to see if our length offset is right. And then we'll go on to the next step to prove out a, a program that you've never run before. So let's probe this. So now that we've got this probed, I'm going to, I'm going to change to my end mill that I collided with this vise or milled into this vise with. Now the important thing here is, to, this is for me, this is tool four and this is edge four. I'm sorry, this is tool four and this is edge three. So in my Siemens controller, I wanna just make sure that I have edge three pulled up and that'll enable the offset that I have stored on this machine. All right, now, Let's go ahead and jog over to this, to the top of the, of the part that I want to mill. And then I'll show you with the screen what I'm going to do here. I've got this end mill to the side, moving in Z to the side and just above the top of this part. Now I'm going to switch over to my offset screen and we'll move it to the zero. And the reason I have it to the side is as I move this to zero, right, in my work co coordinate system, you know, I don't want it to collide with the top. If there's an error, like there was before, I don't want it to collide. So let's go ahead and look at that offset screen, set it to zero, and then see how it compares here in the machine. Once again, we've got tool four with, the th with edge three. That's my end mill I'm working with. And then in my offsets, I've got a G54 here and then distance to go in Z about seven millimeters. So as I lower this down to zero, lower it all the way down, and then I'll go back into the machine and check to see if it, this should line up with the, the top of the part I want to mill. This is very similar, by the way, if, if you've ever worked in a CNC lathe and you're setting up your work offsets manually. This is a very similar process. Of course, on the lathe, I would go into my MDI or here MDA and, and do a, uh, a zero maneuver and let it do this automatically. But this is easy enough. Okay, I'm almost there. Switch down to my, oops, switch down to micron mode and zero. Let's look in the machine and see how that turned out. That looks pretty good. And I knew it would because I knew I, I made the mistake in my cam. Yeah, right at zero. So now that we've determined that the length offset's correct, 
according to the top of the surface that we've probed. I'm going to run the program again, but, but this time I'm not going to be complacent. If I'm confident with the program, I'll sit here with my, you know, I'll sit here like this, ready to stop the program with, with this red stop button. Sometimes I'll even cycle through, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. But if I'm really stressing, right, if the pucker factors through the roof, which it will be this time for me, since I know it's going to go into the vise, or it did last time, I will lower this feed rate knob, right? Once I make that tool change to my 3 8 end mill, I'll lower this feed rate knob down to zero, and I'll control how fast that end mill is descending towards my vise, okay? And if it doesn't look good, if I feel like I'm really close, I'll throw this to zero, hit stop, and then end the program. And a lot of times in, in situations like this, when you're really stressed, maybe it's not your machine, I'm running to either side of the machine and looking from another perspective or getting down and looking here because you don't want to crash. You don't want, definitely don't want to cra crash hard. So that's what I'm going to do here. We'll put the camera on. I've, I've gone ahead and, uh, and re reposted that NC code for, for that depth. So we'll slowly get, get down towards that vise and then I'm just gonna stop the program and then we'll go from there. All right, I've stopped it. I'm gonna turn this feed rate down to zero and I'm gonna go ahead and start it again. I'm gonna slowly, I just turned that up one click. Okay, I could stop it here if I wanted, or start it again. Let's see. You can't see me, but I'm actually over here on the on the left window. It looks like I am going to clear the part. Okay, now it's moving sideways. So I know that I'm not gonna collide with the vise and that I can mill this profile. So there I am. I'm not gonna collide with the, the vise jaw. It's starting to move left. So I know for at least this op, I'm good to go. All right, now I know that I have a good start to this project. However, before I, before I, I let this program rip, I'm gonna get back into 360 and go over all of my cam with a fine tooth comb and make sure that I don't have any other uh, incorrect errors. You know, it's easy on a 10 key. Maybe you, you're, you think you're hitting three and you actually hit eight. I don't know what happened, uh, but it happened. Thanks for tuning in, catch you next time.